Earlier, we spoke to former neurosurgeon Dr. Ben Carson from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Dr. Carson, I wanted to start with some back and forth that took place this week about a, a passing note in your autobiography about being offered a spot at West Point. Here's something that you said at a press conference on Friday. I never said I received a full scholarship. Do you feel, do you feel I like never, wait a minute, don't, don't lie. I never said that I received a full scholarship. Nowhere did I say that. Full scholarship is actually how West Point refers to the tuition program, but you told Charlie Rose about a full scholarship back on October 9th. Let's listen to that. I was offered a full scholarship to West Point, got to meet General Westmoreland, go to Congressional Medal of Honor dinners, uh, but decide really my pathway would be medicine. So straighten all this out for us. Well, you notice I said it was offered. I didn't say I received it. You know, it was in the process of a some kind of a banquet. There were a lot of uh, military officials there. Uh, they were very impressed with my incredible rise to city executive officer, faster than anyone had ever done that before, and uh, said that, you know, we would be able to get you a full scholarship to West Point. And uh, I said, that's wonderful, and I was very flattered by that. But I had already determined that I was going to go to, uh, on to college and on to medical school. So, uh, you know, that's what happened. And that's why I said I was offered that, but that was not something I wanted to take. I have tremendous admiration, obviously, for West Point, which is why I, you know, included that story, and tremendous admiration for the people who serve in our country. Uh, but, you know, for people to try to take this and twist it and make it seem like something dishonest uh, seems like dishonesty itself. And also, I said, within the, in the book, very close to that, that I only applied to one college. I said I only had enough money to apply to one college, and I told the story behind that. So how could I apply to West Point if I only applied to Yale? That doesn't make any sense. It seems to me like some of the people who do these investigations are not very good investigators. The scrutiny you're receiving, uh, Senator Obama received some of it about his autobiography. Hillary Clinton got some things wrong in the stories she told this seems to be a, a, a something that happens to candidates or do you think it's some do you think you're getting a kind of special scrutiny with uh, these investigations that you just referred to there's no question i'm getting uh, special scrutiny because you know there are a lot of people who are very threatened and then you know they've seen the recent head-to-head -head polling against hillary and how well i do and you know they're they're worried there's no question about it and uh, you know Every single day or every other day or every week, you know, they're going to come out with, well, you said this when you were 13, and you did this, and you did, and the, the whole point is to distract, distract the populace, distract me. You know, if you've got a real scandal, if you've got something that's really important, uh, I'm, let's talk about that. You know, yesterday, you know, it was the, the Wall Street Journal that comes out and says, well, he reports in this book that he took this psychology course, but we went to Yale. There was no such psychology course. There was no such scam. What, what happened to investigative re reporting? Because we were able to find the article, and it will be coming out, you know, within the next day or two, showing what happened with that psychology course. Why could we find it and they could not find it? And why do people put this stuff out there? Uh, to make the accusation, to try to make somebody seem dishonest, and then when it is disproven, oh, well, well let's talk about something else. Oh, well, well, you said this when you were in kindergarten. Give me a break. <laughs> let's, let's, I mean, there's so many important things that need to be talked about. Let me ask you a question about something you wrote this week, a very popular post on Facebook that you wrote, answering some questions that you said supporters had brought up in terms of your political experience. You said that, um, that, that the signers of the Declaration of Independence, there were people who were not professional politicians on that list. But the, the founder presidents were people who were men in public life. They either had commanded troops or, or they'd been in the cut and thrust of public conversation for a long time. Where would you point your supporters for that kind of experience in your background? I would say that we all have different experiences in life. And that our country was designed for citizen statesmen, not career politicians. And, you know, I've, I've had lots of experiences in life growing up, uh, experiencing every single socioeconomic level, uh, an, a whole multitude of different jobs, being appointed director of pediatric neurosurgery at a very young age when it wasn't even on the map, 
working very hard over the years to establish it as a very important program in the United States so that by 2008 U.S. News World Report ranked at number one in the nation. Uh, experience on corporate boards, international uh, uh, business as well as domestic business, starting a national uh, scholars program which is active in all 50 states, a reading room program uh, that have won national awards that are only given to one organization in the country out of tens of thousands. You know, that's a lot of experience. Uh, and in terms of the two and three o'clock in the morning phone call uh, where you have to make a life and death decision, I, I'm sure I've had a lot more of that than everybody else running combined. Let me ask you a question about an issue that's, a, that's really risen to the top in New Hampshire in particular. There was a WMUR pro, uh, poll that showed the biggest problem facing the state, according to voters there. 25% of the people thought that, that drug abuse and drug addiction was the biggest problem facing voters there. As a doctor, what's your sense of the human side of addiction? Where does it come from? How is it, how's it should it best be treated? Well, you know, there are all kinds of addictions. And usually addictions occur in people who are vulnerable, who, who are lacking something in their lives. And so, you know, we have to really start asking ourselves, what have we taken out of our lives in America? What, what are some of those values and principles that allowed us to ascend the ladder of success so rapidly to the very pinnacle of the world and the highest pinnacle anyone else had ever reached? And why are we in the process of throwing away all of our values and principles for the sake of political correctness? And now let me just specifically talk about a type of addiction that's going on that is very alarming, uh, heroin addictions. Because there is a, tr a transportation of heroin through our southern borders that is unimaginable. I was down there with the sheriffs. They were showing me the stashes and, and how easy it is to get this stuff through here. That's why the price has gone down so low. And, and no, you can you can uh, purchase it so easily. This is not a good thing for us. We we need to not give up on this war on drugs, and certainly not to facilitate it. We can do this, but we have to have the national will to do it. Another question: You you've gotten Secret Service protection. Have there been threats made against you during this campaign? Uh, uh, y well, the way it works, uh, you don't get Secret S Service protection unless there are credible threats. And have there been a, a lot of those? I mean, I, 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 I can't really go into the details. I've been advised not to publicly go into the details of the threats. Dr. Ben Carson in Puerto Rico, of course. Thank you so much, doctor. Always a pleasure.